Hey guys, it's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we are going to be checking out the Pi KVM Prototype version 3. So let's get started. In case you guys missed it, a couple of weeks ago, I actually built my own using a Raspberry Pi 4 and an HDMI CSI using his software to build this KVM over IP or the Pi KVM. Now, if you guys are interested in that video, I'll leave a link on the top left so you guys could check it out. And also anything we talk about in this video will be linked down in the description below. A couple of weeks ago when I uploaded that video, he was still working on the prototype of the Pi KVM. And I'm very excited to actually get my hands on one right now. But before that, I do want to give you guys a little bit of a story time of the developer because it's actually a very interesting one. So Maxim, the developer of the Pi KVM back in 2015 was actually frustrated because one of his home servers kept shutting down he had no way to power back on or even have a kvm to you know navigate to wherever he needed to he did look into kvm options at that time but to get a kvm over ip even now cost upwards of about $500 just for one unit. He didn't think that was feasible, including the fact that you don't even know what software you get with those, whether it's running Java or ActiveX or whatever it is. He's gonna be relying on that technology. So he ended up deciding to build his own using Arduino and a Raspberry Pi and a VGA analog input so he could convert the signal and stream it on the web. While it worked on his version one, it was like one or two frames per second, and he was able to get HID interface using the Arduino. He decided to improve on this project a lot. He then upgraded and bought a HDMI to CSI bus and ended up using HDMI signal instead. But still, he was still getting the one and two frames per second. That's because of the MPEG streamer software he was using. The MPEG streamer software that he was using is actually unlike ancient technology. Really, it's very, very slow. I mean, it works for like Octoprint if you're going to do a time lapse or something. But for anything real time, it's really not that great. So he literally spent the next year and a half developing his own software called the Ustreamer, which allows him to actually stream almost near real time, like what we see here. And the technology behind it is that he was actually able to utilize each core to encode the image and then time it correctly so it could stream it back. This way we could get up to 20 to 25 frames per second compared to one to two frames per second. And it is open source. So if you needed to stream your own videos or stuff like that, you could actually just grab the software and utilize it. Once his use streamer software is out, he was actually able to implement way much more stuff into his idea, turning this into a full fledged, really good IP KVM or KVM over IP. Not only do we have a really good website we could use for this guy, he's actually added stuff like mass storage device that you could send over through USB, um, ethernet over USB. You could even connect this to a four port HDMI switch and basically have more monitors connected to this and also implementation of IPMI. Honestly, now with all the advancements that he's been making with this guy, I wouldn't be surprised to see this being on a CM4 or the Compute Module 4 because realistically, you don't need the USB 3 device on this and you could probably use the PCIe lane for something else. But yeah, I definitely see him using the CM4 in the future. <laughs> to be honest, what he wrote out to me was a lot better. So I'm actually gonna upload the story and I'll leave a link down in the description below so if you guys wanted to read it. But ultimately, this is what we're faced with which is his version three of the Pi KVM. Now there are three kits available that you could actually purchase. And due to what's going on in the world right now, the prices may vary and also shipping is a little bit varied because of, again, what's going on in the world. Now the first kit is the base kit where you could actually just get the Pi KVM hat. The second is the AUM, which is the advanced USB module. And then the third one is included with a case and a fan and an LCD screen. The base kit is around 120 to 150. And honestly, I think it's worth every penny. The AUM is 30 and then the, the case kit with the fan and the LCD screen is 30 as well. But don't judge its book by its cover because this is not the case you're gonna get. He's still in the manufacturing process of the case itself. So I told him to send me over the 3D files and I ended up 3D printing it myself just so I have some sort of display. So don't even consider this being the actual final case. This is not it. This is just something I 3D printed myself. Now to talk about the hardware, this is the base kit. To start off, we have a RJ45 port here. Now this is a serial console. So if you're familiar with uh, Cisco where you have that blue cable and you could plug in the RJ45 cable to serial port, that's what this is for. Right after that, you have a USB-C and that USB-C is also for serial interface. Then after that, you have your power. Now rotating to the side, you have pins for the LCD screen. Then you have pins for the fan, that's for the case kit. Now moving around, you have the top pins over here, which is for the AUM or the advanced USB module. We'll talk about that in a little bit, but we're gonna move over to the backside where you have your HDMI input. 
your OTG output and that's where you would plug the USB to the computer that you're interfacing with and then you have another RJ45 port. Now this RJ45 port is actually for the IPMP which is to power on or reset or read the power LED or the activity LED. And that's basically it for this device. As far as the advanced USB module on top, this is basically like his version one. The whole thing on top here, you have your PS2 connector pins on top. So if you have older devices that requires PS2 input, that's where you would plug that in. Then you have your flash drive. This is for older devices, again, that doesn't support booting through flash media that you would need to plug something into here. And it's like a pass through. And now on top, you have your HID, which is the human interface device. And then your mass storage device that you would plug into the computer. It's gotta be a separate plug. Again, that's only really needed for older devices or some Mac computers that he was telling me. For newer generation computers, uh, you could just basically use the normal OTG port. And I have not ran into any computers that actually require this AUM so far. But then again, I didn't test it on a Mac. And that's basically about it. Everything else you would just plug right into your Raspberry Pi like so. And that's how it looks, everything connected together. Now, as far as connecting this to a HDMI switch, uh, I am using this version, which is Easy Co. And I'll leave a link down in the description below for this. And this is about $75 for a four port HDMI input that supports 4K at 60 frames per second. And you have multiple devices that you can plug into. To plug it into Raspberry Pi, you would actually just use the side micro USB connected to any port on the USB on the Raspberry Pi, and that is it, that's able to control it. And then for keyboard input and mouse input, you have to use USB 3 or USB 4. Don't use the connectors in the back because you're only gonna be stuck with that device. So you could see how it says keyboard. If you plug it in there, all you get is keyboard. You don't get the mass storage device or anything else. So use the USB 3 or USB 4 if you want those devices. And that's basically about it. Everything else is pretty much self-explanatory, like HDMI out or HDMI in. So. Let's jump into the software. Here we are at the login page of the Pi KVM, and you could just grab your IP address from the screen on top, or you could just check out your firewall to see where it is. And to first log in, the password and username is admin admin, and you get presented with these three options, which is KVM, terminal, or log out. Now I'm gonna pop over into KVM, and you can see it's actually connected to my Raspberry Pi right now, and I could do basically anything I want to do if I'm in front of it or like almost remote desktop. And basically that's the whole point of this. And you could see this is a 2080 by 720 resolution. I could change this if I want, but for demonstration purposes, I'm just gonna leave it here. And you could see if I was to pull up a window, I could just move this around and it's literally like I'm sitting in front of the computer. Now, what I can do is go to the HDMI switch and say I could switch to number three. Now you can see I don't have to illiterate through this because it's one of those boxes where I could just tell whatever input I want. And now I switched over to number three and I have this hooked up to my Udo X86, which is an older machine that I was playing around with. I do have GNOME installed in here and it is actually doing a little bit of um, mining actually. I have the miner going off for XM rig and I'm just playing around with this, seeing how this works out. But you can see this is um, another computer that I have it hooked up to and I could just switch by using the HDMI switch and this is GNOME, it, it works perfectly fine like I'm sitting in front of the computer. And that's the whole point, like I could configure, do everything I need and I don't need remote desktop connected to this machine to have me connect to it. Now, I'm gonna switch over to it, uh, input number two and if I hit click, you could see it's gonna be frozen at this state. That's because the machine is actually asleep and you could tell because you could see this light is blinking. My IPMI control is actually connected to the power and the uh, LED for it and in order for me to wake it up all I have to do is do click power okay and you can see the light changes it's now solid and it woke up the machine as you can see and this is my Manjaro machine which I was playing around with the other day and that's it I have my Manjaro here I have local access to it and one of the biggest features that I like about this is that I could actually connect the drive to it and I was telling you guys earlier the mass storage device. You can actually upload an image if you want. So you have any ISOs you can upload. Uh, I uploaded a couple already. So I'm gonna do, since this is Manjaro, I'm gonna click Solus. And since it's a flash drive, I am gonna connect that to the server. And now I have flash drive connected to the server. So if I was to go start power and power off. Oh, I should have hit reset. Mm. Now I'm gonna go power Turn that back on and I'm going to go into the BIOS screen. You see this? This is something you can't get with remote desktop or whatever you're looking for. 
I can go over to save and exit and boot into my little gadget. And there you have it, Solus. That's the ISO that I mounted earlier. So now I can fully install an operating system without having to be in front of it or attach a USB device to it. And it basically could do whatever you do like if you're sitting in front of the computer. And there we have it. Solus is booted up off the USB flash drive. If I needed to, I could install the device, launch to install the ISO, whatever I want. Now, one of the things that I didn't implement on this, which you can, is you could share your ethernet. So basically, if your device that you have hooked up to don't have an uh, ethernet connector onto it, you could have your Pi KVM uh, pass through the ethernet over to it. Again, everything on this that we talk about will be on their wiki, so they have little options that you can set up. So I'm gonna leave this and show you the terminal. And I know because uh, he might have made some updates by now, I'm going to hop into terminal and do the update. Now, one of the cool things is that I can't write to the drive. So if I was to do touch test, it's a read only file system. That's to protect the SD card. So it could prolong the life of the SD card. I can't do anything or write to it. So in order for me to update the system, I will have to go into super user mode and the password is root. And what I'm going to do here is again, I still can't write to it. So I have to do RW to change it to a read and write system. And then I could do pacman syy, and now it could read the re latest repositories and update anything if it needs to. And that is basically it. Once you're done with that, you don't even need to reboot the system. You just do RO and it turns it back to the read only system. Now, a lot of the configurations are actually in etc slash kvmd. And in here, there's a couple of files, and override is where we have not cd it's supposed to be nano or vi and in here is where you would change all the stuff that you want this file is where i actually made my input so i actually called it the hdmi switch uh, input number one you could change the name of it you could change it to say raspberry pi number two would be my odyssey number three would be my udu like you could change the name to all this stuff and this is how it connects through the usb and it tells how to trigger each pin so i know which screen it's on and you can add a lot of other stuff to this. Like I was saying, VNC could be added to this if you look up their guide, or if you wanted to add uh, the ethernet pass-through, it's all done through these files. That's what you also get when you have the serial console input. So you could actually operate through here and configure the system. So that's it for me guys, but this is a really, really cool product, especially with the prototype that he is going on and allows you to do so much more stuff. And if you have any questions, mainly like stuff you want me to test, not like how to change passwords, which you could find on either his GitHub or his Discord, but stuff you want me to test on this guy, let me know down in the description below and I'll give it a try. And I will be revisiting this again because he's doing so much more updates, especially the H.264 update that's gonna be coming soon with audio and everything. I definitely wanna test that in the future. Also, I will be doing a lot more home lab server stuff this year. So consider subscribing if you are new to this channel and also hitting that bell notification so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And as I say, my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.